welcome back to McFadden Family Homestead. Uh, I do apologize if I sound a little bit stuffy. I'm kind of getting over a mid-March sinus head cold kind of situation. Um, but thank you so much for joining us and checking out what we've got growing so far this spring. Uh, we've pulled out um, some of our supplies, our trays, our plastic cups that we got holes in last year. Uh, this is new for us. I'm trying the Vermont compost that Becky and Acre Homestead used last year. Thought we would give that a go and see how that worked. Last year we just kind of used all like miracle Grow products um, and things that we could get, you know, at our local store or whatever. But I went ahead and ordered a couple of bags of this and thought we'd give it a try. I will say that I'm definitely impressed with it so far. We had some really rapid germination um, on a lot of our things. They germinated probably in about half the time that it said on the package. So I've got my table set up, got our heat mats out. These are the things that we got started first. Um, some golden beets, some red beets, broccoli, cauliflower. They're still um, in the little cups. I really need to get them transplanted like yesterday. <laughs> um, we're going to try and do that really soon, but we just put some of our dampened compost in our cups. We got some labels on some things, and these are beet seeds. What was interesting was that beet seeds actually, it's that's not the seed. It's the seed is inside that little cluster, so there could be you know, a couple of seeds, you'll have a couple of sprouts that'll come up and germinate from that. This has been really interesting. So we've got all those things started. We put vermiculite at the top, kind of helps to keep down any kind of like algae or anything that might start to grow. You can see the dog worked really hard helping me plant seeds, so now she needs a nice long nap. And it was within, I'm telling you, like three or four days, we had our first little plant baby. This is cauliflower, and it was really exciting. So we got them under the lights, and this was probably, probably about a week or so, you know. Um, this was in, like, within the first 10 days, probably, after planting. So they're doing great. Uh, we also decided to plant some trees on the homestead. There was a um, at one of the local farm stands that I've talked to you guys about, um, we had a good deal. They were like $20 for peach trees and apple trees. And we've never grown fruit trees before. We figured, you know, for a $20 investment, if it doesn't work out, we're not losing much. Um, if it does work out, hey, <laughs> uh, it's going to pay for itself like years and years and years and years, right? So we're going to really try our best to learn about uh, this process, learn how to take care of them, and really make these trees as fruitful as possible for us in the coming years. So if you've ever wondered if you could transport fruit trees um, in a Jeep, the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Um, we got rid of our pickup truck last year, last summer, <laughs> and there are times when we find not having that to be challenging, um, but on this day we have a fun story of how we transported our trees in the front seat of the Jeep. Um, we did get two varieties of apple trees. We got uh, Gala apples and we got Honeycrisp. You have to have two varieties of apple trees so that they can cross-pollinate. Um, Gala apples, great for canning. That's what I made my applesauce out of, so I would absolutely love to have those for that reason. And Honeycrisp is our favorite snacking apple, so we kind of wanted that one um, to have one that we just really enjoy for fresh eating. What you're seeing here is not actually an apple tree. This is our... Um, peach tree. We got a, it's called a contender peach tree. Uh, contender peaches I looked up are, you know, excellent for canning. Um, and that's exactly what I wanted a peach tree for because, you know, like I said, peaches were really expensive last year. So if I can have some peaches coming to my own backyard, that would be fantastic. Um, we did, you don't need two peach trees. They're self-pollinating. Um, so you only need the one. So we put three trees in all, uh, in the backyard this spring and uh, we'll see how it goes. Our first uh, major planting day was when we started our peppers. We started our peppers, I think it was, it was the 24th, it was last Saturday in February. So that's been a couple of weeks ago now. Um, and this is, we're just getting everything ready. We're pulling out the big table. Um, all of our heat mats um, and things, getting all that set up and ready to go. And my husband is a school teacher, and so there's always cupcake trays around. 
and <laughs> at a school because it's always somebody's birthday. So sometimes he will collect those and bring those home. We'll wash those up and then we we'll use those um, for like humidity domes um, and try to repurpose them in whatever way we can. Right now, uh, this is an egg carton um, that I had saved and then we also used a cupcake tray and they just kind of worked out great for our peppers because the large majority of what we're starting is peppers there's quite a bit there's like 13 different varieties or something of hot peppers and then we've also got bell peppers and mild peppers and things that we're starting so it takes us just you know a couple of minutes to get the table figured out figure out what, how we're going to situate everything how we're going to be able to cover everything to create that humidity um, that the seeds need to germinate um, some of our equipment got a little banged up <laughs> in storage over the winter um, but eventually we do get it all figured out and determine how we want to do it and for the most part we did follow the formula of starting three seeds per variety so our plan and we've talked about this before but our plan is we're going to start three seeds if all three plants germinate and are healthy and do well then we'll gift the other two plants uh, to somebody else we do have other friends that really enjoy hot peppers um, and stuff and we'll just give the extra plants to them there were a few that we did plant more than three seeds because my husband is just he really really wants these particular peppers and wants to make sure that um, you know that he that they germinate and that he gets you know what he wants for the coming season so now we're going to go ahead and get ready to fill up our trays. Um, I'm going to put some of the, uh, the compost and potting soil in my bowl and then I'm going to dampen that with some water. It just needs to be damp. Um, you don't, it's like if you squeeze it and water is coming out, um, you've put too much water in there. You really just kind of want to squeeze it and hold its shape. Um, this particular compost is actually designed for soil blocking, which is not something that we do. Um, but I wanted to give it a try because Becky just had really good results with it and you know I'm I don't really know I've not really looked into it but you know I'm sure miracle Grow has stuff in it that I don't need so this was a, an organic product and decided to try and start uh, from there this year so the cupcake trays were really nice because they're actually in rows of three um, for the seeds that we wanted to start and then the other ones are kind of um, we sort of did uh, blocks of four and those are I think mostly his like really hot peppers that um, he's definitely sharing some of them um, and then just really wants them to grow so we actually ended up doing four of some things and three of others um, but it's worked out really well the trays worked out really well um, the domes and stuff you know were were you know did well with the humidity and whatnot I actually got some actual garden tags this year and garden markers and I'll try to link the Amazon uh, link some things in Amazon on this video because I did buy the compost from Amazon and I bought the tags and the markers from Amazon um, and I am really impressed with all of them they um, you know from watering the, the tags got all sprayed you know when we were sort of watering in the seeds and they've not run the the markers are still there they're very clear we're just going to transfer them out into the the garden when it comes time for for transplanting so i'm very happy with the products and i'll try and get those linked for you so you can uh, get some for yourself so this is just the seeds i've got some plastic chopsticks so i just kind of use that to make a little bit of a hole in the soil put the seeds in there and then just cover them up um, and it's really just kind of that simple but it did take a long time believe it or not there were a lot of seeds like you think planting seeds when you go to do it like it's just you know you're gonna be done in like a few minutes you've got to put a seed in some dirt it's it's not an overly complicated process but it really does take a long time when you've got a lot of seeds that you're doing and you're 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 just kind of taking your time um, it, it took us like I mean a couple of hours by the time all was said and done um, it, you know we had spent the afternoon planting pepper seeds so uh, but we had fun and it's always exciting to plant something it's even more exciting when those things start to pop up we did have really good germination rates um, 
they germinated pretty quickly. I mean, just like the other plants um, and stuff, things are really responding to this compost really well. We do have some things that did not germinate, but the ones that didn't have a common factor, and it's not seeds that we bought from a seed supplier. So uh, we had really slow germination on my husband's scotch bonnets, which this is the third year for those plants. So he had got some scotch bonnets back in 20, I guess it was 21, um, that he really enjoyed and he saved some seeds from. And then those were the first seeds that we planted in our very first um, garden in 22. And then he saved seeds from some of those fruits and we planted those out last year. And then he saved some seeds from that. And they were just really, really slow to germinate this year for whatever reason. Um, I don't know that they came from heirloom, you know, seeds to begin with or any of that kind of stuff. But and that might be the problem. You know, they might just kind of be done. But we do have some. We planted four and I think there's, there's at least two, maybe three now that have germinated. It was just kind of slow. Um... And we planted something called an orange dadle, which was just a pepper that he had um, gotten from a friend that had grown them. And he really liked them, decided to save some of the seeds. We still don't have any germination on those. They did not take. The jalapenos that we planted we were seeds that we saved just from some really nice jalapenos that we got at the farmer's market and they have not germinated. We planted six of those seeds actually and none of them have germinated. Um, so these are not, you know, seeds that we've gotten from some kind of reputable source or, uh, you know, from a store or anything like that. And they, those are the ones that we're having problems with, but everything else that we got from, even the ones that we got from Etsy, like we were a little concerned about those at first, but they're starting to germinate. Um, only one of the four of the lemon starburst have germinated. We have one purple UFO that germinated. So those are kind of a, we've got a low germination rate on them, but they have germinated. All of the seeds that we got from uh, rareseeds.com or Baker Creek have done great. They're, they've done fantastic. The seeds that I got from M.I. Gardener, which is my like banana peppers, or no, not my banana peppers, my um, bell peppers, um, are doing really, really well. I don't have 100% germination on those, but probably at least like 80%, like they're doing great. Um, but so far, you know, so good. And really, I mean, the ultimate goal for most of these things is just to have one plant. Now the bell peppers, banana peppers, we're hoping to have like a couple of plants because we are kind of hoping to preserve some of those things. Um, but really everything's going really well in terms of uh, germination. So um, again, vermiculite on top of everything is just supposed to um, help so that the excess moisture that's kind of on the top of the soil doesn't turn into some kind of fungus or um, algae or anything like that and protects your seedlings. And so once you get um, all the seeds in the ground, you've got the um, vermiculite on the top, you do want to make sure that you uh, water everything in really good because um, those seeds need to be good and, and moist in order for them to uh, you know, break the shell and germinate. So definitely water them in real good and get them on the heat mats and cover them up with something. Um, we have since, um, started our tomatoes. I don't have any footage of that because I'm having some issues with storage, um, on my phone and things like that. So, um, trying to get that all worked out and I didn't take any kind of film, uh, footage or anything of my tomatoes, but we did start all six tomato varieties. We did that um, just a couple of days ago. So no germination yet. Um, but that will be coming, I'm sure. And that's everything that we're starting indoors. Um, so we are off to a good start. All right, now let's see what we're doing outside. Um, we have worked on one of our garden beds to get it ready. This is some free mulch that we got from a friend that they had on their property. Um, this is just showing you like what the beds look like before we got started. We do have some weeds. This is the one closest to the house. There's not quite as many weeds in this bed as there is in the other. Um, 
But just to kind of show you what we're working with, we really wanted to cover our soil before we went into winter, and that just was something that did not happen. Uh, but we need to get some new fencing around these beds. We're going to lay down some newspaper, water that in, and then we're going to top that with a layer of mulch and let that kind of sit there for a little bit before we start planting. Um, this was, uh, I think, a about 10 days ago or so that we got started on this. So you can see there's lots more weeds over here in this bed. Um, so we're just going to give you a little bit of a tour of what we're working with. I'm going to show you some of the uh, materials that we bought to build our new fencing um, situation. It's definitely more sturdy. It's going to work out a whole lot better this year. And then we're going to end this video with some time lapse uh, filming that we did and that turned what was like a probably three hour plus project into uh, just probably less than a minute. So <laughs> I hope you enjoy that. I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe to our channel if you like what you see and you want to continue to follow along with us in the growing season. We appreciate you so much, friends. Have a great day.